Hey everyone, so today we have a very cool tutorial for you. In the past couple weeks, I've been speaking with a lot of developers and asking them, you know, have they worked with GraphQL or are they familiar with GraphQL? And I pretty much get the same answer every single time, which is I've heard of it. So today, what I thought would be really valuable is if we walk through an implementation of GraphQL on an existing REST API endpoint. Not only will it give you a, a complete understanding of what GraphQL is and why it's pretty incredible, but it will also help you understand what ApeBase does and why we are a very useful tool when you're trying to build services that would utilize a GraphQL API. All right, so let's jump into it and check it out. Okay, so to get started, let's just set the stage by me saying that I created a very simple Rails application that currently exposes a single endpoint. And that endpoint is at restaurant slash ID. So when we get a request at restaurant and pass in an ID, it goes to our restaurant controller and hits the show action, which you can see that it finds the restaurant by ID and then just renders that as JSON. Right, so if I were to open my browser and I were to go to restaurant, an ID of one, cool, it'd give me that restaurant as JSON and two, awesome. All right, so right now this is a REST endpoint, right? I give it the ID that I want and then it shoots back all the information it is exposing about that given restaurant. So let's go back to our application and look a little bit at what else we have here. So if we look at our models, we can see that we have restaurant, which has many dishes, right? And I'm actually gonna look at the schema to show a little bit more about what this has. So we have a restaurant which has a name and a rating and then some, um, some other kind of metadata property. And then we also have dishes, which has a name, a price description, and every dish belongs to a restaurant. So let's say that I was developing a component or an application that needed the restaurant, which we know that we have access to, but then also wanted to see the restaurant's dishes. Well, right now, if I wanted to make that change, I could, of course, jump in and then here maybe make some type of custom object or use a serializer that then would render all that information out as JSON. But then that means that every single time that I get my response, it would be the exact same response, right? So quickly, let's build a component that will actually consume this RESTful endpoint. Okay, cool. So very simply, I created a little view component here that when we give it the ID or we query the ID, it then goes, hits our endpoint and brings us back the restaurant with the ID that we gave it. All right, and so you can see it just gives us the ID, the name, the rating, and when it was created at, and if it was last, the time it was at last updated. And so if we look at that component here, we can see that it's just a single view component, very simple. And all it's doing is listing out every single property on the restaurant's object that we get returned, right? So if I was a front end developer and I was here and now I decide that, oh, well, what I really need too are all the dishes that also belong to the restaurant, what I would have to do is either jump into my server side application myself, update the API, maybe create a new endpoint that is restaurant dishes. Maybe there's an API that we expose for dishes and you can pass the restaurant ID to only get back those dishes. Regardless though, what I'm trying to explain here is that it will definitely take changes on the server side to get the information I need. And then one other thing that will happen is that right here, all we're saying is, hey, give me ID three, right? And it's, we're, we're listing out all the information that is given back, but what if we only needed the name and the rating, right? That means that our system is sending us more information than we actually need, and we have no way of having that happen otherwise. So this is where we're gonna now jump in and say, well, imagine if we could specify in our component here exactly the fields we want from our server. And then when we make that request, it actually only return us the information that we're looking for, right? That's possible using GraphQL. So now what we're gonna do is jump back over to the Ruby on Rails application and mount a GraphQL endpoint and then update our component to consume it. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add some important gems to our gem file, right? So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to add the GraphQL gem, and then we're going to add the graphical Rails gem. This will give us the, um, the graphical interface, which allows us to query our GraphQL API, as well as expose our schema so we can kind of explore the, the endpoint that we're setting up. That will make more sense in just a minute. So I'm going to paste these into my gem file shoot over to my terminal and run bundle install and cool those are installed so now we can jump back into our application so it looks like i actually forgot to save my gem file so let's save it and now let's go back to the terminal and let's run bundle install one more time cool now that's installed and so what we're going to do really quickly now is use a our rails generate command to generate some new assets so Rails generate GraphQL install. And so as you can see here, it created a new directory inside our app a directory um, called GraphQL, where it gave us a bunch of types in something called mutations and a controller, a lot of stuff in there, right? And so we can jump into that in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're going to run bundle one more time. And now we're going to generate some GraphQL objects, right? So remember, we had a restaurant and dish. Those were the two types of models that we're using in our application. So let's run Rails, generate GraphQL object, and we're going to do one for restaurant. Restaurant. Cool. All right, so it made a restaurant type for us. And then we're also going to do one for dish. And it made a dish type for us, right? So now let's jump back in our application. Cool, so we're back in our project. And we can see here that it, that new directory was created called GraphQL. However, what we're going to want to look at first is actually our routes file. So we can see that we have this new route, uh, which is called, uh, which is at slash post uh, GraphQL. And it runs this GraphQL execute. Uh, the GraphQL controller that runs the execute method, right? So that's actually our single GraphQL endpoint. And all GraphQL queries, mutations, even subscriptions, if we were to set those up, will actually be run against that single endpoint. We're going to add one thing to this file, though. Since we added that graphical gem, um, we have this graphical Rails engine, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to mount it at the graphical path so that then we can play with our GraphQL API. Right, so I'm going to throw that in here, just mounting that engine, save, and then I'm going to jump in and restart our Rails server. So I restart that. Cool. Now let's jump back into our browser and go to the localhost here. This is where our server is running and open up graphical. Cool. Loading. One second. Make sure that we're not getting any errors. Oop, we are getting an error. Let's see what, what's happening. To no route match, no route match. Okay, so we're getting a no route match error for these assets. Ah, okay, here we go, one second. So if we actually jump in into our application.rb file, that is in our config directory. Cool, and we open up sprockets. That's one of the requirements that we need to have here. So let's restart our server one more time. And boom all right so this is graphical right and so if we were to say hey what queries can we do, do we have we could say that we have we see oh we have this test field and if we execute that hello world it gives us our first uh hello world query right and so if we jump in here and actually open up the graphql directory and we see that okay well there's the eatly schema there's mutations and queries and then if we were to go into types we can see these different types query type being one of those okay so let's go back to our query type and then we're going to delete this hello world test field that we just ran right and we're going to add something new in here i'm going to paste in the new type that we're adding which is we're going to add a field to our query called restaurant and it's going to be of our restaurant type which we created when we used the generate um, object command and passed it restaurant it takes an argument which is an id and that argument is required right so when you're calling this method you have to give it the id of a restaurant however when that gets called this is the method that calls it right 
So we have our restaurant method and the ID of the restaurant. And what does it do? It reaches into our database and pulls out the restaurant with the given ID, right? So right now, if we saved that and we went back to our GraphQL API, well, we're gonna reload that and we can look at this and say, okay, well now what's available? Ooh, restaurant. And if we want, we can pass it an ID of let's say one and right now we're going to get an error why because we haven't specified anything about the different properties on the restaurant type it's empty so let's go back to our project let's go to our restaurant type which is right here and let's start defining some of the fields that are on this restaurant cool so we are going to give it a field which is id this class is going to be or its type is going to be id and we will not allow this to be null, so null false. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're also gonna say that a restaurant has a name. That's gonna be type string. And null, you can, we can say null true. We'll allow null in this case, as well as a field, which is rating, which is going to be a float type and null true as well we don't make these required cool all right so now let's go back to our browser reload graphical and now we can say okay well hey we're going to choose to get back the id and the name and boom that's exactly then now what we're getting so we're already pulling the data out of our graphql endpoint right and so if i wanted to i could drop name give rating and everything's dynamic. But remember, our concern was that now we need to have dishes, right? So let's jump back and create that relationship via our GraphQL API. So the way that we're gonna accomplish this is very similar to how we've been setting up these fields so far. We're gonna say that we have a field and we're gonna call it dishes. And that is gonna be an array of, from our types, we are going to use dish type which we have are going to have to jump in and define here and then we're going to say that hey this relationship can be unspecified all right and so now let's jump into dish type and let's just copy some of this to speed up the process so when we have our dishes right dishes have an id they have which is a type id they have a name they also have a price which is a float and then they also have a oh whoops too much they also have a description description which is a string all right cool so once again back to our oh one second i think i have to save this yep good there okay so now let's jump back to browser and let's look at this so i'm going to get rid of rating and i'm going to say that hey what I really want is the ID, the name, and now I want the dishes, right? Which I'm gonna jump into, and on those dishes, I'm only gonna want the name of the dish and the price of the dish. And so now that's what our API is giving us back, right? That's super cool. So if we wanted to, of course, we could change the ID, get a different restaurant, different dishes, but now let's actually jump into our component that we built and now utilize this uh, or consume this this endpoint or make this query so back in our component we can see that our application or our component is still just making a normal get request to our restful endpoint and getting back the information it or the information on the restaurant based on its id right so let's switch this over now to actually use our graphql endpoint so first off what we're going to do just to make things a little bit cleaner is we're going to add a new method to this component which builds a graphql query and so we're going to say query and it's going to get past an id there we go let's make it a simple arrow function and what we're going to do is create an object that has a single key called query and that is set to a property which is a string cool and then we're going to pass that id in as the query argument right so there we go cool next what we're going to do is we're going to create a post request 
to our new GraphQL endpoint, which sends this query. And I think one thing that's really important to note here is that GraphQL is not like some new type of protocol for requesting or sending data across the web. It simply is a post request that sends the query as the post body. And then the server interprets it and sends you back the data that you want, right? That's a super important distinction and is the reason why we can use a familiar library like Axios or any other normal way that you're used to making HTTP calls or HTTPS calls. So let's just put that in there and say graph ql since that's our endpoint right and we actually don't need to make that string literal we can just make it a normal string and then for the uh, post body we're going to say is that this uh, query since we have our query function and we're going to pass that the restaurant id and so let's just comment out our old restful approach and in here let's then say that okay well then once we do that, all we're going to, one second, then all we're going to do for now is console out the response. Console.log. Cool. All right, so pass that as a callback. So let's jump back to our component, and we can see that it's status loading, and we are getting an object printed out. So let's go jump in, and sure enough, that is the restaurant object with that ID that we requested. And we can see that we only have the name, the ID, and dishes are actually coming back. So let's see, we actually have to dig a little bit deep into that object to get the properties we want. So let's jump back here and similar to how we said that the response sets uh, the response data to this restaurant, let's jump in and say this, and then it's data.data.restaurant, right? And so now if we reload our component, cool, it's displaying all that information. So now we can see that we have the ID, the name, and the dishes. Now, what's so cool about this is remember, we're in a component right here, right? We're on our front end, we're in our application. So let's say that I didn't want the ID. I think that will work unless the, the null thing will, will, won't let us, but we also want the rating. So I just changed my query. Now, when I reload my component, boom, that and rating. Let's say that for the dishes, I didn't want the price of the dishes. I only wanted the name. Now when it displays, we only have the name of our dishes, right? So this shows now the flexibility that I have as a front-end developer building you know, components for only requesting the data I want, being able to work through relationships and requesting that data, and then never having any type of blocking, um, blocking tasks from endpoint requirements slowing me down. I really hope that this gave you a really great overview of what GraphQL is and how powerful it can be for data-driven applications. And we will try to do these tutorials for not only Ruby on Rails, but Python or Django, as well as Node and Express apps. And so looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Thank you.